but there was a few announcements this week for major Bitcoin miners expanding their fleet operations. The first one uh, was BitFarms and Stronghold. I actually believe this happened last week, but they entered an agreement to purchase Stronghold. And then they are also taking over the Mawson site, uh, which is in Western Pennsylvania. This brings BitFarms total up to 950 megawatts of potential deployments and capacity. And I believe it, they have a pathway up to like one point something gigawatts as well. So they're going to be in the, the one gigawatt club here shortly if they continue to execute. Uh, and a GDA, which announced a 40 megawatt expansion in a Texas site and a pathway up to 400 megawatts. So this is from Bitcoin Magazine. Bitcoin miner GDA, which is private, plans to expand its recently launched 60 megawatt Texas data site to 400 megawatts. Uh, so there's also rumblings of them possibly going to IPO. And then the last one I wanted to talk about was Cypher Mining. You can see here again from our friends at the Miner Rag, Bitcoin Miner Cypher to acquire new 300 megawatt site in Texas. Uh, and this is, I believe, right after their Black Pearl site was purchased, which was another 300 megawatts. So what does this all mean? I think it's pretty simple. There's a lot of cash for some of these Bitcoin miners who have done a good job with their HODL positions uh, at, at the end of the last bear cycle going to the bull cycle and have been able to use that price appreciation or they've used ATMs really well or they've just had like cash on the balance sheet from other things. And now they're going and picking up Bitcoin miners at record low prices uh, because hash price is really low. So a lot of these sites are a little cheaper. The one thing I just have questions about, and I don't know if it's something that we can like really get to on the show is like, just because hash price is low doesn't mean sites are going to be cheap. Sites are still expensive. Uh, there's still a lot of demand for energy and a lot of demand for built out sites. So I'm wondering if Colin or Matt, you guys have any thoughts on that last point or just general thoughts on the three companies we discussed there. I'm just reminded of how ruthlessly competitive the space is, right? Um, and how apparent it is that uh, when different strategies play out. Because we have certain miners right now that are ruthlessly expanding. And then we have miners that are also going through acquisitions and tapping into financing and really feeling the depth of hash price that has persisted for a while now. I mean, months on months. It, and like to put it into context, right? Where hash price is now, um, it was double back in March 2020 when the Bitcoin price sank to, you know, 5K. And so that's how much hash rate has ripped, how much difficulty has risen and how much competition there is in the mining space. And so I think we're just seeing kind of symptoms of that all over the place. If you're, if you're not cash flow positive, right, then you are basically tapping into your balance sheet or financing in whichever way, equity or debt, right? Or your other option is to basically wind up and exit and try to go through um, a chapter 11 or acquisition deal. And uh, I think we're just seeing like a diverse range of things happening across a bunch of different participants. But like the, the, like the story arc, I, it, you're just kind of seeing it play out over time. Um, and, you know, we're looking at this kind of like week to week basis, particularly on this show. But it is, it's it's very fascinating. It's like I can't stop uh, looking and paying attention to it and, and studying it. But at the same time, I'm like just kind of hoping, praying for this price rip to where everyone just gets like this really comforting. <laughs> we want all our friends to win. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Colin, I'll throw it over to you. I mean, uh, I feel yeah, like not you understand this as well as anybody. What do not you think? Too not too much to add, but just to maybe piggyback on something that Will said, the sites are not necessarily cheap, but it's obviously miner dependent, um, depending on how underwater you are or what your PPA is or any number of factors, you know, you're going to be selling for a fairer price to you or your buyer, right? So if, if a miner is really distressed and they really have no other options, then they're going to sell their site for a discount compared to what they put into it. Um, so I think that a miner that 
has been exemplary here in finding those opportunities is Queen Spark, right? I mean, they kind of came out of nowhere acquiring site after site in Georgia, later in Mississippi. And they really expanded their hash rate rapidly through this strategy. So looking for distressed assets and looking to acquire hash rate and megawatts on the cheap right now is obviously extremely advantageous for some of these miners. And I think that we're going to see more distressed asset sales, especially if Bitcoin doesn't rip per what Matt just said. So it's going to be a story that I think we keep tabs on for the rest of 2023 or 2024. Excuse me. Grid, Clean Spark, Marathon had some reshuffling with uh, HUD 8, which HUD 8 was a reshuffling of, of US Compute Bitcoin North Corp and Compute via North. USBTC, yeah. I mean, if you haven't been paying attention to this for the last two years, uh, like if you like got hit in the head with a rock and you woke up two years ago and you're still interested in Bitcoin mining for whatever reason, maybe you just like kind of hate your life and you're, you're still a part of this, then you'd be like, oh, all the names are changed. Like everyone's all over the place. So yeah, it's a different market, different cycle, uh, but the, the rules remain somewhat the same. Bitcoin price goes down, people lose their shirts. Some people are able to pick up more shirts and get a nicer wardrobe. 